some ground the lgbt community which joe biden promised things got the things that he promised and they're still gaining ground but blacks are again still at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder uh blacks are still uh struggling uh to be recognized on an equal platform as simply being human we're animalized uh not just by the police we're animalized in the media we are presented differently in the media. The narrative surrounding our reality is set in a different cast theme and framing than anyone else. We are constantly made targets by the way that we are presented. Uh, anything worthy, uh, noteworthy, is always overshadowed, cast underneath a bunch of other crap, or simply not reported. You would think that every black man in America is a deadbeat dad, a woman beater, and a woman hater, a black woman hater specifically. You would think that every black man that becomes successful goes out and marries a white woman. Statistically, that doesn't happen, but when that's all you see paraded in front of you, when that's all you see uh, being, being put out and shared are black men deriding black women, and you don't see the black men celebrating black women, you would think that's what black men do. When you see the cowards and the, and the feminized black male image, you think that's what we become. And then when you see the, the, the negative presentations of our beautiful queens, you think that's the representation of black women. No, that's what you want black women to be seen as. You don't want to see our celebrated version. You don't want to see what most of our women do. They stand up strong. They get out and they do the things that many other women couldn't do if they had to. You know, I'm talking about mental, emotional, psychological, and spiritual resilience on top of the physical resilience. We're not gonna talk about the fact that a black woman is three to four times more likely to die during childbirth solely because of how she's viewed and how she's handled and the way that she's been viewed in this, in, in this country from day one. We're not gonna talk about that. We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna go out <clears throat> and say we gave them animals a day to celebrate. And then, to top it all off, listening to them talk about it, they're celebrating something they don't understand. They don't understand Juneteenth. They don't understand that Juneteenth is really a Texas thing. 
that everybody kind of caught on as slaves from Texas evolved into uh, their freedom and eventually migrated out of Texas in different places and took that celebration with them. Um, it was in Texas that the last of the free say, slaves found out on June 19th that they had actually been free two years prior. Uh, it took that long for the news to trickle down and for uh, slave owners and all of the other stuff that had to take place to acknowledge, acknowledge and accept it. But that that that's that's here another thing. To me, uh, being a native Texan, having lived in a number of different other places, but being a native Texan, um, one of the senses of pride about that day was it was ours. It wasn't a national holiday. It was something that just came out of our joy of being free, it was ours. And and it didn't need any validation from the very ones we had escaped from. It, it, it didn't need validation. I don't need a, a person or a an entity or a nation that has historically oppressed me to validate my freedom. I validate my freedom by the actions I take. I validate my freedom by the force I use. I, va I validate my freedom by exercising my freedom, by living free, by being free, by teaching others to do the same. Not because somebody says, hey, here's another day. I don't need your damn day. What I do need is for our people to sit up and say, okay, whatever. What do you have for us tangibly? We've thrown our vote in the way of, not, not me, but us. We've thrown our vote for 60 years at a rate of 90% per, per voting cycle towards the Democratic Party. What has the, Democrat, the Democrats done for us? Besides tell us that they're not the Republican Party. Besides shout racism so loud and so frequently that we actually think they understand our plight and they're on our side, but actually have uh, implemented policies that have been just as damaging as any that Republican administrations and Republican Congresses and Senates have done. What have they done? We have to get smarter. We have to understand how things work. These symbolic gestures are worthless absolutely worthless we don't need it to be a national holiday to celebrate it if we believe in it and defend it if we want to truly honor it you know uh and, and let it be and mean what it traditionally and historically has meant rather than letting somebody define it for us letting somebody rewrite a narrative on it because now you know uh you know you got people like ricky smiley on his show talking about everybody calling all over the U.S. to tell me what that meant for you. Well, number one is, it really truly wasn't a U.S. reality. First and foremost, it wasn't even just a Southern reality. This was a Texas or a Galveston reality. Let's, you know, a, a, a Southern Texas, let's put it that, reality. So that's that. Know the history, read the history, understand the history. But more importantly, we have to start actually taking actions that produce tangible results that have intrinsic and measurable value that we can look at and literally say, if we continue along this road within X amount of days, months, years, this is where we can be. We need to have that in our, uh, in the way we educate our children. And I don't mean using public education as the primary mechanism. I mean, we need to have this in our finances, both individually uh, in homes and as a collective. We need to have this in our political operation and movement. We need to have this in how we address our communities and gentrification and mass incarceration and miseducation and so many other things. There has to be a way of measuring your movement. If you cannot measure your movement, you cannot predict your future. 
there's only one way that you don't measure your movement and you can predict your future. By doing nothing and letting things remain the same, you're gonna pretty much get the same. Other than that, you, you can't say, well, I will arrive at, because you don't know how fast you're traveling. If you're traveling at all, or if you're traveling in the right direction. I don't need Juneteenth to be a national holiday. I need black people to come together and start moving as a unit. I need black people to start seeing beyond the surface and understanding when they're being bamboozled. I need black people to hold everyone who is handling us accountable for how they handle us and provide real true consequences for mishandling us. And that goes for the ones inside the community as well. If you don't handle our elderly, our women and our children in a certain way, we will handle you. If you don't sit up and move and operate in a certain way, you will be dealt with. It's that simple. There is a code of conduct. It's on the website. Go to the Odyssey Project 21.top and look up code of conduct. Matter of fact, it's in one of the tabs. You ain't got to go search it. Just hover over the tab and it'll, the drop down menu will show you and you go to code of conduct. Check out the Blueprint 1.0, uh, which is the blueprint for black empowerment. Look at the things that we need to do. Look at the things we should be doing. Look at what's possible if we do it. That's what we should be talking about. Again, I just had to drop that on you. And don't forget to continue to support the work we're doing, specifically those who are familiar with the work we're doing with this young black mother and her four kids. Uh, con show, continue to show your love. If you don't know what I'm talking about, get off of this video and on our channel, there are a couple of videos that talk specifically about the work we're doing with a young black mother and her kids and the jeopardy they're currently in and what we're doing about it. And we are uh, doing doing some uh, something significant and we're, we're excited about helping her and making sure her family is safe. Uh, check that out. Uh, look at it. It'll tell you how if you want to support what you can do. If you want to be a part of what's going on in, in providing long-term resources, it'll tell you that. But we are not going to leave her hanging. Uh, and once again, on that note, uh, I am looking to report her being in her safe place before this week is over with. Uh, it's, it's taking, you know, you got uh, a lot of moving parts, but we, 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 we are there. And so I'm excited about that. But anyway, uh, definitely... Uh, show some love and I'm about to get out of here and with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that I run like Myriad Business Solutions the Visionetics Institute Odyssey Media Group I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas and other areas uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.